Hello everyone and welcome to the video. Today I'm filming a kind of video I actually have never filmed before, if I remember correctly. And that is a rant from you. <laughs> because I need to get these feelings out. And I literally spent hours upon hours ranting about this with friends. And I thought, if I can talk that much about this with friends, I'm sure I can make some kind of comprehensible video about it. So I am just gonna do it. I assume I will show it in a thumbnail. You know it is about the curse breaker. Serious. I have so many thoughts. Like if you are here and you don't want spoilers, I'm just gonna start off with absolutely love the first book. Five out of five stars. I don't know what these are. I don't even know. I even have the one book upside down. I mean that's a, that's a whole mood. I wish so fiercely that these didn't exist. <laughs> Like, I had never wished like that before. That's all you need to know. If you don't want any spoilers, that's all you need to know. At least tell you that it is a beauty and the beast retelling. It is also a portal fantasy. It follows Harper, who gets taken from our world into this magical world called Evanfell. Evanfell. Amberfall. <laughs> and, you know, one uh, there's a bodyguard there and there is a prince. And the prince has been cursed and turns into a monster. Will she be able to save him? You gotta read it. I'm gonna talk spoilers. Because how to do this without spoilers, I don't know. But if you were here just to check out this beginning of this video, then thank you. And just know if you ever read this series, you don't need to read this. That's all. So, goodbye to you. And let's continue with spoilers. I read this book a few years ago now. Like two, three years. Absolutely fell in love with it. I didn't think I was gonna love it this much. Five out of five stars. Like the whole book was just so solid. I just love Harper as the main character. I loved... Ran with the prince. I don't know why I'm telling you this. I assume you know this. And of course, a grey who is the bodyguard. And you know, I shipped them. I didn't just ship Harper with one of them. I shipped all three of them. It was going to be my dream <laughs> trio. My dream poly trio. Okay, so I do get that Arthur don't want to make the, the main relationship a poly relationship because it's a bit not usual, you know, in a YA fantasy. I do get that. She could have done it. And it would have been the greatest thing I ever read. But I do understand that that was not the plan. But I don't understand the plan that happened. <laughs> I just don't understand why is Grey Rand's brother. But fine. I can, again, I could get behind this fact. If they were not for other facts. I will get to it. I will get to it. But point is that this was really, really good. Like, I was so impressed by it. I didn't think I was going to love it. But I just love, like, how solid and thoughtful it was. Considering that the Rand had been a monster for so so many years and like how that affected you know the kingdom I feel like we don't like talk about that in a beauty and beast retelling where we just assume the kingdom is fine But you know if he's a prince who rules? <laughs> when you know the prince is gone because obviously the prince was gone or like the royal family was gone because he was like Trapped in his thing etc. It affected the kingdom and you get to see that and I thought that was really interesting As well as you know the character moments Grey just being amazing just amazing, scary grey, love it so much. That was just like quick thoughts about the first book. And the second book, I have a US arc off, so it doesn't like match these, which is the UK paperback. And like, I'm gonna buy it because I want them to match, but also I like, I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna. I got a US arc for this and when I read it, I think I was very excited because you know, I love this one. And I just didn't feel it. it this is about grey. And the aftermath of this. And he was just such... He was like a completely different character here. Because he found out that he is Ren's brother and he runs away. And he's like, oh, I don't I don't want it. I don't want to be the king. Okay. And then he meets Leah Mara. And you know, I can talk a billion years about Leah Mara. And how she is the most useless person and character. I have literally ever met in a book. <laughs> I am so angry about Leah Mara's existence. I've never been so angry before. She's literally a dead fish on land. She's not even dead because she's sadly alive. She's like, you know, Magic Harp, <laughs> the Pokemon. She's that. She lies there and she wiggles and tries to stay alive. But that's all she does. She's literally also just a womb. She just, <laughs> she, <laughs> sorry, I get so frustrated about her. I hate her. I have never hated such a useless character in all my life. Leah Mara is like the bane of my existence. If I could choose one character to kill, <laughs> to not exist, to like not ever be thought of, in every book in the whole universe, 
and I could choose away one character, it would be Leah Mara. Grey could have been single. If Grey's not gonna be with Harper or Ram, he meets her, they go to her kingdom, she gets some sort of character woman, and manages to kill her mother to become queen, even though her sister was gonna be queen. But suddenly, Grey changes his mind because Ran had like his Tamlin moment. For some reason, like all the characters, you know, just changed because the author decided so. And Harper was fine with this Tamlin moment as well. In a way, like she still stayed with him and I was like, you okay, Harper? Are you the same Harper in the first? Yeah. And then <laughs> ends with Grey being like, I'm gonna be king anyway. And he was just like the whole book. He was like, no, Ran, I am loyal to him. I've been loyal to him for years and years. We lived together alone for years. I mean, they had like a turbulent relationship in a way that I feel like they still stayed bodyguard and prince. But I still felt like I skipped saying they were bodyguard and prince and had it in their head that I kept this professional relationship. But they were definitely deeper, deeper, deeper friends. And this is shown. And then we have a third book that like literally is like the most useful third book I have ever read. It's even more useless than the second book. And I just don't get it. Here Ran has gotten the ultimatum from Grey to surrender maybe or there will be like a war in 60 days. You have them preparing for the war. <laughs> I also completely forgot to talk about Lilith who is also like the most useless villain ever. But yeah, they're preparing for the war. And then we have Leah Mara trying to be queen and she literally cannot do anything without Grey coming to her and telling her like, you are wonderful, you are beautiful, <laughs> you are courageous. And I'm just like... She literally cannot do anything. People are like always complaining about her because she's too soft and blah, blah, blah. And basically she's useless. But yeah, and then people also have sex. All the couples had sex. And Leah Marvel becomes pregnant with Grey. And uh, then she disappears from the book. And I was grateful for that. But I'm just like, she was a womb. She didn't do anything. She didn't do anything in this book to further the plot, to further the story. The only thing she did in this book, in this book, was <laughs> to be there to be Grey's love interest. Because the author couldn't dare, couldn't dare <laughs> to, you know, make this a poly relationship, but also just and with anyone. I do get their brothers, but that was just added because I'm gonna get to that. The point is I'm gonna go to the last book. So yeah, we think this war is coming, but then Lily decided to kill everyone where Ran is because he decided he doesn't want the war because she was the one pushing Ran to do the war. She literally pushed the whole thought forward. Harper escapes, they go back to say Ran, they kill Lily. That's the whole book. And they're building up to this war thing for the whole book and then it never happens, which wasn't surprising at all. And like, you know, it becomes peace and then Grey becomes king. And I still think that's odd because yes, he was the heir or whatever because he was the oldest. But like, Ren was groomed for this this whole life. But yeah, also he had his Tamlin moment and he did try to talk about it, but I just don't get the Tamlin moment because he, he was just a different character. And then they went back to being the other character. Harper was mad at him about that, but I just get it. Why did we have that Tamlin moment? It was to, you know, make them mad at each other and like, yeah, but it was just, it was just weird. Everyone felt out of character. I don't even know. So my point is, I will talk about the relationship more, but my point is that it feels like this book was written by a different author because it was so thought through and so well done. And then I feel like the author didn't know what to do and just created whatever these are. And uh, I am mad about it because I have never read like a book where I gave the first book five stars and the second and third book well, the third book I gave one star, but the second book I gave two stars, but I'm pretty sure both of them deserve one star. <laughs> and this, Leah Morrow was born. So it gets one star for that alone. So the relationship. I do get that she made Ren and Grey Brothers. So I do get it sounds gross when I say that they all should end up together. But I also think that Harper would have been better with Grey. But that's another thing though. But then now it sounds like, like I'm just pissed about like, the people I wanted to be together didn't end up together. But it's not about that. It's like the sexual tension Ren and Grey had in this. Why would you write this sexual tension between these people if you knew they were brothers? Like they had like the vibe where like they were literally alone in this curse for years. And I'm just like, you, you telling me they were alone here for like a long time and never like, you know, did a little smoosh, <laughs> did a little smash. Like you telling me that because I feel like they have the vibe where they did something. And then they don't talk about it. And then I found out they were brothers, you know, it's a bit awkward. But I just, in my head, I'm deleting that fact because it just feels like something added to like remove the, the sexual tension and also to make it impossible for the to be that poly relationship that I want. I don't understand. Why also just like find their brothers, find the author wants Brand and Harper to be together. 
But why would you create Liamara? Why would you create Liamara for Grey? Who was a great character that like... Why? Why would you do that? At least create a character that's interesting. That's not a room. That's all I want to say. In my head, this book is a standalone. I feel like I could reread this and just like forget the pain that comes after. Because this, this is useless. <laughs> I will admit it has been a journey to experience this pain. It definitely has been a journey. I am not grateful for it, but it was a journey nonetheless. <laughs> When you have a good idea and you write the first book and that usually is very strong because that's where you got your initial idea in. And then you just got to fill out the rest. Filler. Filling out the rest. The pining, the love these two characters had for each other ruined. <laughs> ruined into whatever it became. But I really still enjoy Harper and Ren and Grey book one. I don't know what happened to them in these books. 1% moments where I could see the old characters here again. And that was almost worth it, but not really. I honestly don't know what happened. But I think I covered everything. It wasn't the longest rant, but it was a rant nonetheless. You know how I felt about it now. I probably forgot something, I feel like. So my point taken is read the first book and enjoy it immensely and then read fanfic to fulfill your needs or write it by yourself. I, you know, actually unhauled books, if that was the thing. These would go in the bin. <laughs> in the bin, I tell you. And I will keep this and I will be happy about it. So I think that's enough for this video because I could go on and on about Leomara. We will be here for an hour, I swear. But I think that's it. Leave a rose emoji down below if you enjoy this. And I will go and cry about Rand Grey and Harper for the rest of my days. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Oh god, that was a notification. And you will see me soon. Bye!